Hello again. The Prime Minister's refusal to move on demands to provide hungry children with school meal vouchers over the holidays has, at the very least, been a public relations disaster for the government. And there is growing pressure on Downing Street from Conservative MPs who are demanding a rethink. Well, we're joined now to discuss this by the former Conservative Special Advisor Peter Cardwell and Sonia Soda, formerly a senior advisor to Ed Miliband, now chief leader writer at The Observer. Thank you both very much for being uh, with us. Um, Peter, to you first. You were working for this government until relatively recently. Do you sense a U-turn is coming? It has to. This is a disaster, both in PR terms, in strategic planning terms, and also just the moral case of the fact that these children should be given uh, free school meals throughout the holidays. This was something which was clearly uh, a major problem for the Conservative government during the summer holidays. It was completely conceivable that this issue would come up again in uh, for both half term and also the Christmas holidays. And Marcus Rashford is a great campaigner. He's someone who uh, very sadly has that experience of uh, someone who has lived in poverty himself. And he's making a completely reasonable argument. And it baffles me why this has, and it doesn't give me any pleasure to say this because the people concerned are my former colleagues, many of whom are friends, but they have to move on this. They have to U-turn. It's 12 days into this. And there's no reason why this £20 million, which is a very small amount of public spending uh, to, to sign off, that's, it's almost, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, in comparison to how much money is spent on other things, it's a very small amount of money. I just don't see why this hasn't been done. Uh, Sonia, I can see you nodding along there. I get a sense that you're going to agree uh, on the fact that a U-turn should happen. I mean, the government, I guess, would say, look, there is money there through universal credit. There is money there through the £63 million of hardship funding to councils. Um, it's not that they want to see children go hungry. It's just trying to work out the best way of getting money to those families. What would you say to that? Well, I think we have to take both of those claims that Conservative MPs and ministers have been making and pick them apart a little, actually. So the first is this idea that they've put universal credit up by £20 a week, so it's all OK and nobody needs to worry. Well, actually, that increased universal credit comes in the context of a decade of very deep cuts to tax credits and benefits that have left families with children on average thousands of uh, pounds a year worse off. So 20 pounds a week is, it's, you know, it's better than nothing, but it doesn't compensate for the cuts that we saw over the last decade. Families, are, you know, with parents in low income jobs are still worse off. So it's not enough. And then the second issue is really about the 63 million pounds that Boris Johnson keeps talking about. Now that was a fund that was set up in the early summer uh, to go to councils to help them uh, help families with the cost of food and essentials in emergencies. But the government actually said in its own guidance for that fund, it expected it to be spent at most of it within 12 weeks. That's the end of September. So it looks just absolutely dreadful because we've got a situation where um, families are finding it hard to put food on the table during the school holidays. We know that because of the pandemic and the government are kind of spinning these its own measures to try and make it look like it's done a lot. I completely agree with Peter. We're talking about quite a small amount of money here in the grand scheme of things. It's a fraction of what Rishi Sunak spent subsidising meals out, the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. So there really just isn't a case for the government doing this. And I think they are going to U-turn. They probably won't call it uh, the same thing that they called it over the, su over the summer because they don't want to make it look like they're handing Labour a victory. But the most important thing is that we see action from this on government. I can't believe it hasn't happened already. And I think we will see that in the next week or so. I'm quite interested in looking quite at this from a public relations yes. perspective. And um, Peter, you know, this is a number 10 who don't like to look as though they're being driven by media storms. They don't like to be look, to look like they're being influenced by what's going on on Twitter or social media. Do you think sometimes that leaves them at risk of being a bit blindsided when there is genuine public feeling? Well, perception is reality, uh, Sophie, and you know the government can talk as much as it wants. Sonia obviously has the the uh, figures at her fingertips there in terms of the 63 million and all these other measures that have been put forward. The fact is, and what makes me very sad actually, because I spent three and a half years in conservative politics, had a great time, and I work with a lot of people who really do care about the most vulnerable in our society. People like my old boss James Brokenshire, for example, who really want to make life better for people, and there is a lot of uh, worry and anger, uh, on, not just on the Tory backbenches, but in the country, I think, about this policy. And the perception is that the Tories don't care about poor people. That is not the case. 
Uh, that was not the case with the people I was working with day and daily, but that, of course, is the perception. And I think this is a would be a small U-turn. I think it's an absolutely vital U-turn. It's a small amount of money, as Sonia correctly says, um, and it has to happen. But as you correctly say, uh, Sophie, from a PR perspective, this is a disaster. Number 10 has to move because it's going to move eventually. You know, I know all of your viewers know that this is eventually going to happen. Why not just do it now, get it out of the way and move on to the real proper political debates we should be having in this country? not about whether we should be giving money to children who need that food. And just quickly, Peter, why do you think it isn't happening now? I think there is, I think there's a lack of strategic planning on this. I think they could have seen it coming. I think there is a resistance certainly to pressure, of course. You've got to be strong in government, but you've also got to be someone who listens. And I think Boris Johnson needs to listen to the country. He needs to listen to Marcus Rashford. The fact that he hasn't had a phone call with Marcus Rashford, I think, is is pretty silly to be honest um even if he's not going to move immediately um and i think the action needs to be taken and you know we're still talking about this 12 days after the uh, issue was originally brought up and of course from a political perspective it's not really about party politics but from a political perspective labor of course has the momentum on this and labor is uh, very effectively portraying the, the tories as a, 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 a party that doesn't care which is not my experience as a Conservative and as someone who worked in Conservative politics it for three feels, and a half um, years. It's very frustrating. It, it does feel like we need to end by, I guess, acknowledging the incredible campaigner that is Marcus Rashford. Um, Sonia Soda, how impressed have you been uh, by the young Manchester United star? I mean, I think he's just been amazing. I think it's incredible uh, that someone who's sort of 22 has demonstrated such moral and compassionate leadership and such massive integrity throughout this. And um, I think it's a real shame that it's taken a 22-year-old footballer to sort of step in and provide that leadership in the vacuum that's been left by government. But I think massive, massive credit to him. I mean, I thought that over the summer, earlier in the summer with his original campaign, and um, my respect for him has only grown with every sort of message that he sends out. And I think it's really interesting to sort of look back and see, you know, the government did give him an MBE just last month. They honoured him. And there is a bit of me that just thinks that they hope that by giving him an MBE, it would sort of mask not doing any more on this issue. And hopefully he would go away and sort of be quiet and maybe not challenge them. But I think what's so incredible about him is that it has not silenced him. It has not taken away his motivation to speak truth to power. Um, and that's absolutely brilliant. There are people with, you know, decades more than him of experience of working in this issue who might not do the same thing. So all credit to Marcus Rashford. Okay, thank you both very much for a very interesting debate. Thank you both.